Alright, hello and good morning everyone. I thought I'd take a minute today and show you how to quickly and easily and for free make your own custom personalized Christmas ornaments or gifts um, with some very simple features and some more complex features such as like letters on irregular shapes or um, orbs, etc. And then, you know, adding in custom text, custom little um, shapes so that you can personalize each ornament. The house was because we helped my sister renovate her house. I was thinking these person might have their own little version. And here's a printed version. So, uh, let's just jump right in. I thought I would just keep this one very casual and informal, so I'm not gonna make a detailed list of step-by-steps, but I'll show you everything. So, first thing you do, of course, is see what others have done. So, competitor research, product research, of course. <laughs> uh, you can just jump on Thingiverse is where I found the one that I'll be working with. Um, and a lot of times you can already find them personalized. So like this guy, he's put in the work. Uh, he has 2,000 names. Um, and when I downloaded his here, you can see it appears that he's telling the truth. Like there's a lot of them here. Uh, so you might already have what you need. And just, you know, if you have a person with that name spelled that way, um, you can just throw it into your 3D uh, printer and print it off. But if you... Uh, have any experience with these, of course there's going to be something missing. So like my name, Jared, it's not spelled with an O, it's spelled with an E, so you're gonna run into that issue, so I'll show you now how to customize them. And then we'll make one from scratch. Another great resource is uh, GrabCAD, because you can actually look through the softwares and get an Autodesk or Fusion 360 version of the file. And I'll make sure to upload the files I'm working with today, so you can actually just edit my files if you'd like, if you'd like to use them as a template. So I'm going to use Fusion 360, which is free for personal use, and the link's in the description of how to download Fusion 360 for free. They're actually doing a promotion right now where I can refer people. So that's actually if only you purchase it, I believe. So unless you're working with this commercially, I don't think I'll attach a referral link, just a regular link. So let me silence my phone first because that is annoying. Someone's messaging me. Let me pause my phone. Or pause this. I don't know how to silence my phone. Oh, that's strange. I just updated my phone and said, saying, do not disturb there. It said focus. So I had to click it and then click what I want to do. Anyways, so what should we do first? Let's, we already know how to download and um, just directly print the already available version. So let's instead edit one and then I'll make one from scratch. So minimize this camera and let's just go into our data panel. Go to wherever you'd like. Uh, whichever project and subfolder you're using. I'm going to go here and I'm going to do the new design plus symbol. And I'll go ahead and control S to save this. And I'll say Xmas Orb YouTube. No, this is not the orb. Uh, let's rename that. Alright, you know what? I'll just make a new design. <laughs> Alright, since we're doing an orb in a second. So control save in the new design and this will be Xmas Ornament. Ornament um, custom. All right. So we can close our data panel and let's just jump right in. So what do we want to do? We want to use the mesh that already exists. So I'm going to go to insert, insert mesh. I'm going to go down to the one I downloaded here and open that. Oops. Camera thing is always in the way. All right. So. Now that we're on insert mesh, uh, we're gonna go ahead and select millimeters and okay. So we're good to go uh, to start working on this. Now, what do we wanna do? So let's, for this example, go ahead and remove the text um, and add our own text. So we'll go into the bodies. These are, this is one singular STL file, as you can see there. It's STL body indicated by the yellow mesh icon. So we'll go to the mesh workspace I'm going to do modify, convert mesh. Okay. If you run into issues here, because you have a very complex, maybe like um, a hollow with multiple decorative features, and it has trouble converting, check out my other YouTube video on how to convert complex mesh files or very large mesh files. Uh, so body, I'm just going to click this body here. And yeah, these settings are fine. Okay. So this might take a second. Uh, based on the complexity of your file, like I was saying, but this one actually did pretty quick. So, see we have multiple bodies now. Um, let's find the main one. So here, 
Well, let's check out which one of these is. <laughs> these is, uh, these are. So this body appears to be the majority of it and the rest are letters. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all the letters. Right click, delete. And now it's converted back to a mesh. Control Z, not sure why that happened. Instead, let's just rename this one so we can keep track of it. So I'll click and just type main. Cool. So I'm going to turn all the others off visibility wise and we can work with this. Okay, so for simplicity, I can leave the line here or add a new one. To keep it simple, I think I will just leave it. And let's jump in. So I'm going to click A surface and type the letter C for create. And that opens up a new sketch. We're not working with the 3D sketch, so if that's click, go ahead and unclick that. And let's do project. So you could go to modify and project there. Great. Uh, so I just use the shortcut. So just type P for project. We've already selected the face, but it's not showing it. So let's do a body, actually. Yeah. Okay. Because this has multiple complex faces that aren't on the same plane, uh, even though they're supposed to be technically. It's, it's it'll get complicated. So let's just do the body. Um, okay. And that might take a second because of all those edges. Uh, we're not too worried about simplifying those here because, as you can see, I printed it this um, last night. Just a real quick 10-minute edit, and um, it's not noticeable on a 3D print. Okay, so we have all this, and let's go ahead and turn off the visibility of all the bodies. And this is the line we're going to work with. So create text and select text on path, just like that here. And it's upside down, we can see that. So let's go ahead and do place text below path. Oh no, um, we want it above. So let's do a, a horizontal flip, a vertical flip. Hmm. Get rid of the horizontal. Well, this isn't great. Oh, it's, okay. Yeah, there we go. All right, so text below path, because it's wanting to do this upside down. And there we go. Just play with that, those settings until you find the right one. And we'll also do a line center. So you see it's overrunning a little bit, but don't worry about that because we don't know if the name's gonna overrun yet. Let's just type in a name. So I'll do Jared. I'm gonna do all capitals. Jared. All right. And um, so that's easy. You can t select your different fonts if you like. You can bold it, italicize it, uh, select your height. So let's do 0.45. Enter. Okay, that's fine for what I'm doing, and I think these will join all right. So let's go ahead and do finish sketch, and you can see we've added a sketch to our sketch folder. Oops, looms messing with my drop down there. Okay, so we've added a sketch here, and so let's turn the visibility of our body back on and do go back to solid extrude. Select that text and do extent type distance to object and then select the back face. You can see it's wanting to cut there, so let's actually do a join. So it's a good sign when you see it wanting to do cut, that means your bodies are um, interacting. So it's likely going to join well. So we got that going and let's just click OK. So that appears, we still only have one body, that's the main body, so those letters did join well. Um, and that's it, we're pretty much done. This is printable. You, oops, you click the body, right click, and do save as mesh, millimeter, okay. It'll send it to your preferred print software, or um, you can save it as a file, a SEO file. So, Here's it in my uh, slicing software, and you see, it looks fine. So that's great. Let's do one more thing to this one, and then we'll do one from scratch, the orb. How much time are we at? Nine minutes? Pretty long, so I'm gonna open my data panel, and you see I drew up a little house here. Very simple rectangle, triangle, and stovepipe. So what you could do if you want, drag in 
So I just clicked it while holding the left mouse button. I'm gonna drag it in, drop it into the workspace. And you can see it way over here. Uh, it's not really worth trying to align at this moment, but I'll go ahead and click OK to insert it. And let's just type the letter A for, oh, oh no, that's France. Uh, type the letter S for search and AL for align. Okay. We want to align the components. That'll be fine. So I'm going to click that body and I'll just click this body. So I got us a lot closer for sort of the front face of our line. And now I'm just going to move it around. So um, rotate, free move. Yeah, free move work better. So you can just put this in however you want, whimsically. And you see it's way too big. Don't worry about that. It's not worth resizing. So you just go in and just scale it. Oh, wait, before we scale, because we'll be scaling the main one, I believe, let's go ahead and break that link. That links it to the other file here. So now, now it's its own file back here. So S A L, so search and align. Grab it. We'll just leave it here for a second while we scale. Go ahead and capture position so that doesn't happen again. Modify scale. Select that body and let's just eyeball it. So that looks fine. Okay. Move. Oops. Move. Um. So that should be pretty good lined up. Let's go ahead and actually I'm gonna move it slightly more. Okay, that looks fine. And let's go ahead and do joints. So let's do shift, holding shift, type J. That's a relative joint, so it's just easier. Um, so it's just as built, so it's as it's uh, currently is. So I can just select that body and ooh, it only wants to do components. Forgot about that. Let's right click on the main body and do save as create components from bodies. Okay, so again, holding shift and pressing the key J for joint. And it gives us a build joint. We're going to select both components. And let's do a. I really wanted to do on the face. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm not thinking. As built is in place as it is. Ah. So let's do a joint where it lines up these faces a little bit better. So it's a little bit more printable without supports. So have that. Looks fine. Um, let's go ahead and do planar. Okay. And oops. Now that that's a component, it moves. I can right click ground, so that's grounded, and go ahead and move this around. Okay, that's fine. And you can see, last is that this is off from this back face, uh, so to avoid having to use supports on our print, let's go ahead and do capture position, extrude, uh, and just extrude it down to here. So that works great. Uh, what I did is I just selected Fusion's really good about that, but if you want you can do two object and select that to make it a better working file. Okay, cool. And again, I'll attach this, um, a link to this uh, for you to download this file if you want to just use the same template, because now you can just go back to the sketch if you wanted to and instead of it saying Jared, you could type in John. Oops. And is that how you spell John? Looks looks weird. I think it's right. Uh, I'm sure there's a John out there spelled that way. But yeah, see, it automatically updates. That's what's going to make it super easy to do that in the future, to make a ton of them. Because, you know, obviously I don't want a thousand Jareds or maybe you could do it like a thousand hands at families or something like that. But, um, okay. Wow, we're at 14 minutes. Um, yeah, now let's do the custom orb one. So, control save this one there. 
Now for a custom orb. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we're in a new file here. I'll go ahead and... Oh wait, no, we forgot we already saved one named orb. I'll shoot. There we go. Create a new sketch. I'm going to select a plane, any old plane. Just grab a circle tool. Um, and I'm just going to type 4 for 4 inches. Let's go ahead and I'll type inches as well, I am, to make sure, since I didn't want to stop doing the circle. You can always check what units are in here. So, that'll be the main feature. All we need is an axis to go up to the orb, and then that gives us something to revolve around. So we're going to go to the revolve tool, grab one half of the circle, How's the how's this thing always hide behind the camera no matter where it's axis? Um, grab that axis and now you see we've got the main orb feature. Okay. So one little tip is for making the hanging part of the orb, it'll cause a coincident body um, issue. So it's just something you have to run into to figure it out. But um, I already know the way to solve that is make this hollow at the beginning before trying that other one. So we're going to go ahead and shell this and do inside thickness of inside thickness inside thickness of 0 0.1 inches. We can check that that worked by doing section analysis, and you can see there it did divide in half. So that's great. Let me turn that on and off here. So now let's do the text first since everybody knows how to do that and we'll do the last feature last. So, grab our start of sketch and grab a face. So I'm going to turn the body off in a second, but first I'm going to type P for project, select the body and OK. I'm going to turn off the visibility of the body, that's for my reference here. Now we want the text in the center. We really want it offset from the center, but you know what, we'll do it offset. That's the proper way. So I'll do it with that. I'm going to drag and type X for um, creating sketch geometry or construction geometry, these dashed lines instead of a regular line. Since they're just a reference, I'm going to type offset, select this line, and I'm going to offset it. Ooh, I don't want all of those, I just want the one. So turn off chain selection, pencil, offset, turn off chain selection, grab the one line we want and drag down to say negative 0.1 inches. Okay, so we have that here. We can adjust that later. And text. Oops. Create text. Select this line. And we're backwards again. We could just leave it like that because really it's relative. We have just a circle. So, but I'll go ahead and swap it. Oops. There we go. All right, and I'll just type YouTube as a text, and we can leave it all as we did in the last one. Great thing is Fusion's actually realizing what I did last and saving it. So that's great. And finish sketch. So that's inside the body. Let's go ahead and do extrude, starting here, and just dragging out. See, it wants to cut, but we're going to do join. And of course, this will look a little silly. We want it to be prettier than this. Um, let me turn off the analysis so you can see the full picture. I'll turn off the sketch. Okay, so we'd like it to be smaller, but still even that looks weird. So what we do is we go to object and select this and then offset however much we want. So let's do 0 0.1 inches again. That actually looks way better, right? Nice contoured um, and it's in line with the existing geometry. So. Let's go ahead and just leave it at that. Feel free to play around with that as much as you want, of course. Um, get fancy with it, do helix <laughs> words. Uh, last is the hanging feature. So we're going to turn our sketches visibility on. Create a sketch here. Okay, once again, typing P for project. Okay. And then we're going to turn off the body so we can see our sketch better. I'm going to draw, no, so we know we want a loop, and how you do that is you just draw a circle and you revolve it around an axis. So 
So we need a line. Oops. Line, sorry, from the origin, going past the orb, and a right angle here. So we can add a dimension so it's easier to. Nah, you know what? We'll keep it casual, no dimension. Um, also, doing the same with the circle on the inside, I will add a dimension to that. Um, so put one inches. Okay, so that's really all we need. Let's go ahead and finish that sketch. Um, we're going to do a revolve. We're going to select the two halves of the circle. And for the axis, we're going to select here. So we need to turn our visibility of our bodies back on so we can see what we're doing. And we're going to change this to join. So that looks a little ridiculous, right? Maybe. I don't know. But I think it's fine. Let's go ahead and change it up, though. So we have the third sketch. We're going to turn the visibility on. And you can see I can just drag these around and adjust it to my liking. So let's start bringing them in. Does that. That looks a lot better. Let's check how many bodies we have. We have one, so this did join properly. And you know what? That looks pretty good to me. Um, maybe I'd want a little bit bigger of a hoop, so I'd right click sketch and do show dimension. Change this to 0 0.2, maybe. Sure. No, 0 0.15. Okay, that looks good. And let's go ahead and do some fillets. Because why not? Yeah. Cool, looks good. All right, so that looks a lot better. Turn off sketches so you can see that. If you want to spice it up, you could type A for appearance and throw on some paint, you know, glossy, black. Well, I guess no one's doing black Christmas ornaments. Yeah, and then, you know, you could add faces to make it stand out, like grabbing green and then selecting a face. Yeah, and going through and color little letters if you're gonna do a rendering or something, but it is not. Super necessary, but okay, so that, that would print great. You could double click, right click, and do save as mesh again. Export as millimeters, and okay. And there you go, it would save. Uh, those of you that have been keeping track though would notice that we're gonna have an issue, and that is that these letters in here will um, cause some issues 3D printing. Obviously, you're gonna have to have supports inside. It's a hassle and it's a waste of filament no one sees those letters. So you could leave it or you could fill the whole thing in and waste some filament. Or um, here's another way. So let's turn off the analysis or let's open it, turn off the current analysis, go to inspect, section analysis, we'll grab this plane, we'll drag it out so we can see all of the letters. And there are several ways to do this. We can do a cut and using this as a tool. Here's the easiest way for most people. So just select infusion, this works. Select the face and just start deleting. Um, so I'm hitting the uh, delete key and just whichever ones will let me delete them, just continue on, on that way. Um, it's actually good when they expand like this because it'll delete all the other ones that it catches. So just continue on and you see it deleted all the letters in there. So delete, you see it deleted the whole one. Sometimes you get lucky like that. It's really nice. I wish SolidWorks had things like this features like this that are more user friendly and just waste a lot of time, a lot of times uh, having to deal with um, simple operations like this when it'd be just easier to delete them out. Although it does mess up your uh, timeline a little bit. I'll show you that in a second. Nothing major, just makes it messy looking. Okay, so our letters are still there. They look great. Let's see if the bodies are fine. Yep. So that looks great. Now we have a truly good model, but you can see it did mess up my timeline here for uh, having all these delete functions, but you can just right click and do create group and clean it up that way. So that's it. And see, we just went through um, and mess with these. And feel free to use this as a template if you'd like. And okay. Wow, 24 minutes. Sorry, I thought meant for this to be more casual and just quick, but there's two methods you can do. Uh, feel free to suggest anything you'd like to see. I'll link Fusion 360, the Thingiverse, uh, original file, etc. All right, thanks. Bye.